I would like to present whom I have known from uh, quite a long time, uh, being a young change maker. I thought he would be particularly interesting for you because so many of you are students that uh, you can also make the world a better place. So I had a couple of questions for Malik. Malik is an environmentalist who has uh, done a lot in Ghana to raise, to mobilize the community. He has gone on walks, he has gone on talks, and he's always busy because he's doing something. And uh, let's go to the question. So Malik, I'm glad you're here with us. Now, you called uh, the flooding in Accra practically an annual festival, like Carnival in the Netherlands or uh, so I, I want to know why this was the case. Is it, uh, is it because of what is happening in terms of uh, growth? Is it because the infrastructure is not catching up with the other macro friends? And uh, is it because the community themselves are also part of the problem as well as part of the solution? And the last thing is, suppose you were given power, you know, uh, tomorrow, what would you do? Thank you so much for being with us and answering these questions. Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to everybody. I'm very grateful to be part of this webinar on World um, Water Day to talk about why the incident of flooding is happening in my country, Ghana, and the capital city. Next slide, please. Yeah, I'm going to focus on the the location of Accra as the outline of my presentation, the causes, which are the roles of uh, the macro trends and the reason, and then offer three solutions, which is the role of the public investment infrastructure and the role of the community in shaping resilience and what would be the first thing one would do as an individual decision maker if I happen to be the Ministry of, for Minister for Urban Development. Okay, so... Um, you can see the map of Ghana inside Africa, which is along the coastal uh, stretch of F West Africa. And the administrative capital is Accra. The interesting thing is that we are the center of the world geographically. If you look at the longitude and the latitude location, and look, if you look at the topography of Accra, we the average topography height is up between 20 to 70 meters above the mean sea level. And the sloping is great because it's below 11% with the water table varying between 4.8 to 70 meters below the surface. So um, on the immediate uh, left, is we find where we are sandwiched between uh, three countries, Cote d'Ivoire and Togo, and the upper is Burkina Faso. And then the lower portion, we are bounded by the sea. So the middle map shows the administrative divisions into 16. And then the lower portion, which is red, is Accra. On the surface, you see beautiful skyscrapers. But the country is faced with um, chronic um, floods. So on, the, on your right is the flood rates. And the, on top, the very deep part are those that are flood prone. And then um, the higher ground, which is the pale brown part, is where you are safe if you are in Accra or if your building is there. Um, with respect to the history of flooding in Accra, it is not only uh, a problem to Accra. It's a global phenomenon, a global problem, because one third of the global natural disaster is contributed by a flood. And it's due to three uh, reasons, social, economic, and environmental reasons. But the problem is that the risk for the future fl floods is increasing because of the climate and social, social development. Now, flooding in Ghana, especially Accra, started since the 1930s, gone through the 20s, uh, gone through the 50s, 60s, 70s, 2000s, millennium, and it is with us now. It has caused massive destruction and even Several intermittent downpours for just two days caused flood. Some just early morning downpour disrupt uh, institutional activities. And then just after two hours of stormy rains too, there was a problem. The biggest challenge is when um, uh, Ghana had um, twin uh, disasters. There was, a, there was a fuel station uh, 
explosion and then there was a heavy flood due to heavy downpour. And that was on the 3rd June 2015 and 150 people lost their lives. These are ma the major causes. We have the two macro problems. We have been the problem of flooding in Ghana and Accra, and the lower ones are just my, uh, they're small. Uh, if you look at the top one, it's poor planning of towns and cities with improper enforcement of laws. Then it's urbanization. Because of poor planning, uh, urbanization now takes the center stage. Once there is urbanization and people are moving in from the villages, the towns to the city, there is improper disposal of refuse and it cascades down. Once there is improper disposal of refuse, it affects because they choke the drain, so poor drainage and silting also contribute to it. And the last, that cap, it is the climate change. However, climate change and flooding are going hand in hand, both in developed and uh, countries and then underdeveloped countries. But when it comes to the, the negative impact, the developing countries face it more because apart from the economic uh, dis discussion, there are loss of life and ill health. This is underpinning the poor um, urban planning. This is the whole uh, problem that leads to the problem of uh, flooding. People who are trooping in are supposed to, on the left, go through the approved way of building. You, like, you acquire the land plan, then the servicing, then you build before you occupy. But a lot of people trooping in are now um, illegally acquiring the land. They just illegally acquire it, build it, occupy it, and say, oh, I need service people. I need water. Uh, let the um, electricity come to my area. And then others will say, well, it cannot come because where we want to channel it through, somebody has built there. And this is leading to the problem that is exacerbating the flooding in the city of Accra and is leading to encroachment on waterways with developments competing with the wetlands and then settlers on the front road area. As I'm talking to you now, one, two thirds, more than two thirds of the wetlands that we have Ramsar site has been occupied by illegal structures. So the water that is supposed to um, settle before going into the sea after a heavy downfall does not have anywhere to pass. So what is happening in the city of Accra? We are imitating the water cycle the wrong way. If you look at my right, there's supposed to be condensation, but that is where poor planning is taking place. There's supposed to be evapotranspiration, as in the water leaving the trees and the rest, but that is when urbanization rather is taking place. People are leaving the the towns and coming to the city. There's supposed to be evaporation, but because we know our country, the southern part is bordered by the sea, where so evaporation is supposed to take place, because of urbanization and um, improper disposal of refuge, we rather have improper waste di disposal. Then where there's supposed to be stream flow and groundwater flow, there's poor drainage. So it's, it's, it's choking the gutters, and then when there's supposed to be precipitation at the right time, because we, have, we forget to obey the simple rules that will help the cycle of our living be um, encouraged, what happens is that there is rather climate change. So the flooding now becomes a cyclical affair. Now, you realize that because of that, we, this is the summary of all the... Um, things that happen. There's overflow and runoff, muddy flooding due to intense rainfall, groundwater flooding due to raised water levels, creeping, urban creep paved areas. Everybody wants to build and put um, uh, pavement blocks instead of growing trees. The sewers have a problem. Climate change is for reservoir for canal also have a problem. And then impervious areas, flooding through alluvial soils, blockage of sewers, all uh, contribute to the flooding in one way or the other, and this persists. Good. Now, if you look critically at urbanization, it connotes it connect population increase in um, cities resulting from internal growth or migration from rural urban poor, principally for the desire to what, have economic embetterment. If you look at the 
the two major cities that we have, um, Accra, which is the capital, and then Kumasi, which is big in terms of area. If you look at the population trend from the early 2000s to 2010 to 2021, Accra has increased exponentially. But you look at the size area, it is just 3,000 square kilometers as compared to the second, our second uh, popular city, which is uh, Kumasi, which, which area is about 24,000 square kilometers. You realize that by 2021, Accra has increased by 15,000 people coming to the city of Accra alone. Now, you should know that urbanization contributes to flooding. When the grass spaces are taken over, you put concrete there, you put stars there. Apart from that, you put garbage that you improperly manage it. You are also increasing flooding. That's what is happening. And then at the 64 New Year School by the University of Ghana, Legon, one professor found it def def defines a slum as a group of individuals living in the same area but lacking one of the following. So if you are living in a nice house, a nice apartment, and you don't have improved water, you don't have sufficient living area, adequate sanitation, structural quality, and security of tenants, as in you don't need to be worried about being ejected in the next couple of months then you are living in a slum. So there, there are various degrees of uh, slumming in the city of... Uh, so I want to highlight on one aspect of the waste. If we divert these four types of waste, you look at my finger, there are five. The mixed waste, and when we mix, put all the waste together and mix it, we, we are not helping ourselves. And mostly that is what is happening in uh, Accra. So if you take the mixed waste out, you are left with four types of waste, which is the organic. So when you properly segregate, segregate the waste, you can divert the organic parts into compost. The plastics are used for building as pavement blocks for building. The papers have other use, can be repurposed. The glass are turned into beads. So you, if you divert this waste from the landfill, it means that you're also helping the city to live a clean life. And that means that you could be uh, contributing to reduce flood because two years ago, more than 60% of the waste is collected, but the remaining 40% live with us and they are part of the ones that enter the sea because the gutters connect them to. So what are the solutions for us as a, as a nation? The public funds that are given to us is supposed to help in managing existing infrastructure with a continuous effort to go into green infrastructure. But you see, the problem is that, I'll talk about this at the end of the day, the reason why this is going on. The culture of maintenance in Accra and Ghana as a whole is, is low because money that is supposed to go into this is diverted into something else. So with respect to having money put into good use, we have to interface proper maintenance with nature-based solutions to mitigate the flooding situation. Then understanding awareness through public education, because that is the next step. Once the infrastructure is there and maintenance is taking place, then awareness must take the second role so that Sorry, for the organization of these flood warning sessions to access information through, um, through early I'm warning sorry, sorry, have response, we can help to reduce the flood situation. Then solid waste management, that is also important because the primary and secondary tributaries that, that go through our community-based solid waste management, if we are able to cap our dam size and improve the final solid disposal space and its capacities, we'll be able to reduce the flooding. And then to improve the metropolitan planning system, which we do not... Uh, have in the country. And then finally, establishing of a buyback centers because there is a linkage between urban and rural uh, uh, migration, which affects the sustainable development goals 11. Because once people are moving, they are bringing five things. There are material, there is energy, there is wood, there is capital, and there is information. But without these sound urban linkages, a lot of people will rather troop into the city. So whatever structure you put in, the, let's say you put adequate facility for just 10 people, because 20 or 50 people are coming, you are going to, it's going to impede or compromise on the other areas affecting the SDG 11. Communities, 
the role of the community is very important because this is the time to come back to embrace communal spirit so that in case we prepare ahead of the flooding situation in the car, not when it is going through. So we prepare ahead before the flooding comes and during the flooding, you can execute uh, the knowledge that you have shared and code manage with respect to the water cycle. The second important one, apart from all that I've mentioned, is the collective action to resist dumping of waste in the drains to reduce the capacity of the drains to convey the runoff water to the sea because this is typical in a crowd. And those who are de in deprived areas, as soon as it's raining, that is opportunity to pick up their waste that, that need to be sent to the landfill because they don't want to pay. So they use the, the flooding and the rain as a carrier to transport their waste. Now, what will I do if I'm the Minister of um, Urban Development? If the actual theme for this world water day is accelerating change and we really want change, then the first thing I'll do is to stop the traveling to conferences because Every flight that we take is taking about half lot of land from Accra. It's going somewhere because uh, the cost of uh, the traveling to, let's say, Dubai or other countries, just to sit in a plane to go for a conference, we are losing about half lot of land. And that money can be used to go into developing and then maintaining the existing facilities that we have to reduce the flooding situation that we have in the country. And so that is a solution that I'll propose to myself when I become the minister. But it shouldn't be only because I have to be a minister before. The solution must come from us ourselves. We are not prioritizing. So it is affecting uh, the state of flooding and the rate at which it is flooding in uh, Accra. On my immediate right, I've, I've done a circle. You can see this is the Adomi Bridge, one of uh, Ghana's beautiful bridges. A uh, beautiful place, but you can see on the right. There is water seeping through. There is waste seeping through yes. because people do not appreciate the beauty of the nature to extend because of economic uh, reasons. So if we are able to contain the waste, repurpose the waste, this beautiful uh, river will stand the test of time and not have waste uh, gone into it. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful.